My name is Abu Bakar Basba. I am a medical doctor who started as a clinical officer, currently working in Nakuru Provincial General Hospital as a medical officer in turn. I'm also a founder of a community initiative called LAMAM that stands for LAMU Against Maternal Mortality, which tends to incorporate conventional medicine with traditional beliefs and practices to improve maternal and child health care. Yes, we can, sure we can change the world. Welcome to the Yali Voices podcast, your home for sharing the best stories from the Young African Leaders Initiative Network. Be sure to subscribe to the Yali Voices podcast and visit yali.state.gov to stay up to date on all things Yali. It took Dr. Abu Bakar Bazba a few years before he found what he calls his passion in life. Having initially trained as an electrical engineer, he soon realized that this was not where his heart was. He wanted to help people. So he trained as a medical clinical officer in his native Kenya. And after working in the maternity ward of his local hospital, he decided that there was even more he should be doing. So he started over again, and now he is a practicing obstetrician and gynecologist. Born and raised in Lamu, he was inspired to confront the challenges facing pregnant women in his rural community and to get them the resources they need for healthy pregnancies and safer deliveries. So together with four colleagues, he created Lamu Against Maternal Mortality, or LAMAM. LAMAM's primary aim is to educate expectant mothers. LAMAM is equally committed to raising the skill level of traditional birth attendants, or TBAs, which is the preferred choice for many mothers in his community when it's time to give birth. Abu Bakar sees his role as not just a physician, but as an advocate for his patients and his community. Here now, our conversation with Dr. Abu Bakar Bazba. This is the main reason why I'm doing this. It's because the level of education on health service is poor, especially where I was born and brought up, that is Islam. You'll find that 67% of pregnant women prefers to deliver at home by an unskilled person who are not formally educated that is traditional birth attendance. They cannot identify danger signs. They bring patients when it is too late for us to help. They are doing a remarkable job because sometimes you get villages where we don't have nurses, so there's no one to help them. So if you say we are not going to have this traditional birth attendance, I think it will not be ideal because they are doing a remarkable job. You get village, we don't have nurses, and these are the people who are helping our mothers there. However, there is a lot that need to be done. There is a need of collaboration between medical personnel, community and traditional birth attendants to work together. Because all these are important key role players in our community in provision of reproductive health service. Just yesterday, my wife called me and said that one of the traditional birth attendants, and she's a medical student by the way, uh, that traditional birth attendants say I should do this and this and that for me to get this and this and that. So what do you think? I told her, it's your choice. So just decide what you want because I know they also play an important role in your life, in our life as a community. So the level of education on provision of health service is poor, and that's why despite that I'm a doctor, I go back to the community, I teach them, I make them understand the importance of having collaboration between medical personnel and the community. I teach them the importance of the big books they see in the facility. They are not just for recording. These are the records that will be taken back to the government and the government will use this record for them to decide which equipments to bring to that facility. I make them understand all that. I make them understand by them going to the facility, it is what will make what is their need and by that, it will is what will make the government to decide on what to bring to that facility. So if we are not going to deliver in the hospital, there is no way the hospital will be upgraded. If we have few numbers of people going to seek medical service, there is no way that the government will consider doing that. We as an advocate for rights of reproductive health service, we people who want to make sure that our mothers get health services, including reproductive health service to them, which is entitled in the constitution that it is achieved and we have strong evidence to prove that these people need it. So health education is poor, health awareness on what they need is poor, and that is why we formed this organization. If you ask me what is our best or the most important thing that we have achieved as LAMAM is the trust from the community. If you ask for numbers, I'll not give you big numbers. 
if you ask for good statistics, I will not give you. Because there is no way I can measure the trust, but we can feel the trust that the community have with us. And uh, we did not start this thing just yesterday. We had this idea in 2013, and we formed the organization in January 2014. All that time up to now, we are still building the trust. And now community kind of trust us in whatever we are telling them. We were able to obtain this trust because we are recognizing our cause. I'm born there in Lamu. I will not be surprised if my mom has been delivered by a traditional birth attendant. I will not at all be surprised for that. So we are using our own traditional belief to make sure that we improve our practice. So considering that, we are recognizing the fact that traditional birth attendants play an important part in our society. We are not kind of person who says that these people are killing our mothers, because they don't. Even in hospitals, sometimes we get maternal death. But the issue is they are not empowered with the skills, with the ways on identifying danger signs, you see, all those things early enough for them to do that. So we kind of get the TBAs on board, get what we call, I think it's abaya. Abaya is like most, uh, I miss the English word, but uh, most uh, recognized, most vocal women in the community, get to explain to them why we were doing this. We got religious leaders on board, get to them to know uh, why it is important for us to, to do this. And uh, without forgetting the area chef, uh, like we have a very active and robust chief area in Pate who really helps us a lot in these issues. We even use his office to make agreements between the health workers and the traditional birth attendants on how they can collaborate and work with each other to improve maternal and child health care. The best person to do this, I think um, everyone is the best person to do this. Everyone needs to be responsible in issues of maternal and child health care. In our community, if we can have combination of both men and women, because this is something else that men tends to be far away from issues of uh, maternal services. You know, everyone knows that when you are pregnant, this is now I'm going to deliver is a period of joy. But it's not that feelings in Lamo. When you are pregnant, you'll find that the community comes and surround the house. Oh, what is, how is the going? Is everything okay? Is she fine? How is the child? You see, that feeling of joy comes when the child is out. But not anyone now get a chance to enjoy that feeling of joy. Yes. And when we were doing our own assessment, we found that most of the household, most of them, uh, I don't have percentage, I don't have record, but any time when you go to the house, you won't miss a mother who has had stillbirth, be it fresh stillbirth or macerated stillbirth. You will always find that. And cerebral palsy is very common. Lamo against maternal mortality, we started it in, uh, we had the idea in October 2013, and uh, I gathered four of my colleagues. So we just sat in my room with double deckers. We didn't have even good tables. So we just sat on the floor, start talking about it. Hey guys, we saw this clip. We know there was a clip, a program from KTN. So it was just like a wake up call. Guys, there is this problem. I really thank KTN for that. But we knew there was this problem, but we were not doing anything. So guys, yesterday we saw this uh, program. So what do you think about it? We just started to chat about it. And then here comes, La Mama was delivered. We said, hey guys, let's form an organization and let's see how we can help. That's what we started. We didn't know where to start, how to start, what to do, we didn't know. So let's just form La Mam, then let's see what we can do about it. So in January 2014, we got registered by the Ministry of uh, Gender and Social Service. And now uh, we decided now, now we have our child, we need to make him breathe now. Because already delivered, so we need to make him breathe. So what we did, we said, we need to find out, is he breathing? So we went to the community, we did uh, assessment, we got to interact with the TBS, we got to interact with the community, we got to interact with the religious leaders, just to kind of get the feeling of what is going on. We put, I can remember one of my favorite uh, discussion we had is we decided, let's put both the health workers and the traditional birth attendants and the village elders and the chief together, now let's discuss. It was really interesting. Uh, we got really interesting point. And uh, after getting to know exactly that one of the major reason is there is poor health service seeking behavior among our community. 
and very few people are doing something about it to bring the community and health workers together. And an idea came that we need to do something so that we get these people together. So one of the projects that we are doing currently is to improve collaboration between traditional birth attendants and uh, health workers. So we provide trainings to the traditional birth attendants to transform them from traditional birth attendants to birth companion. So we created kind of a curriculum or a program on what we are going to teach them, putting in mind the traditional belief, but also importantly, the policies that we have for maternal and uh, child health service in our government. So we make them to be agent of referrals. So we teach them on danger signs, for example. We teach them when they get someone who is pregnant, even if he's two months, one month pregnant, they should bring to the hospital. We teach them on how to, what to do when they bring the patient to hospital, be it during antenatal period, during delivery, what they need to do with the mother in the delivery room. We teach them on what to do after the delivery. So the first one is agent of referral. Now the second one is nutritional advocate. There are a lot of beliefs on what a mother can eat or should eat when they're pregnant. So we make them understand that there are things that the mother needs to have. A complete triangle uh, nutrition, I, I've forgotten its name, the important things that a mother should have. As a nutrition advocate, we also teach them on how to breastfeed, the position the mother. So we use them to teach the mothers on how to breastfeed and what have you. We also teach them to be hygiene promoters, so teach them uh, on waste disposal, how to keep the house clean, code care for the child, because uh, neonatal sepsis is one of the major things that we have. And it all starts from the code. Changing people is really one of the most difficult things. But if people don't want it, it will be useless to have all that. So changing people is really difficult. But I think the model that we have used is we are not changing them. We are improving their lives and we're making them understand the difficult that mothers go through when they're pregnant. And uh, using facts, being born there, knowing how people are when they're pregnant, the worries that the usually community get when someone is pregnant, we used to explain to them that this is not a time for us to be in sorrow or to be sad. This is time for us to celebrate. It's a time for us to know that somebody is coming, that somebody might do something to this community. So we are not trying to change them. We are trying to improve them. We are trying to make them know that there are some things we need to do for us to improve the lives of the pregnant mothers in our community. There are some things we need to avoid or continue for us to improve the mother's life. A good example of something that they need to continue as our tradition. Once you deliver, usually we have what we call mkandaji. Mkandaji is someone who does massage. So this thing really helps in protecting thrombi formation. After delivery, we have DVT, deep venous thrombosis, one of the major things that can occur after delivery. But to prevent it, you need to walk, you need to massage, you need to exercise, you see? So usually our community do a full body massage after delivery, from the head, actually from the hair to the toe. Because they start with the hair, move around the hair and what have you, then they go down the whole body, our mothers get massage. That prevents from DVT, deep venous thrombosis. So we cannot say that this is traditional belief, it's something, it's past, so we need to stop it. No, we don't look at that. We look at things that will improve the community. So we are not changing the community here. What we are doing is we are improving the lives of pregnant mothers and the children in our community. We get so many challenges when uh, we are communicating because uh, the level of education is somehow low. And we are working with traditional birth attendants who most of them uh, have not gone into education or the formal education system. And uh, most of them are usually old, so they did not even go to school, most of them. So it becomes really difficult sometimes to get to them to understand. Let me give a practical example that we get. You know, nowadays people use research, use statistic, use numbers to show how good or bad things are. So it is really difficult for us to use statistic to make people understand that this is how the situation is. It is very difficult for us to make people understand that a single maternal death is nothing simple. It's not just one maternal death. It's something major. 
and uh, somebody who has been has gone to education knows the meaning of maternal mortality rate will be easier for them to put that into their mind and come up with something that make them understand that yeah this is difficult however we don't need to use numbers we can use the stories that we have we can use the good and bad stories that we have and luckily we we were born there so we make use of our own native language to explain to them the stories to explain to them that one maternal death is not just one everybody knows that pregnancy takes 9 months but i can tell you for fact in lamo we got mothers two of them when we were doing our assessment in different areas one believed to be pregnant for 11 years that's the level of uh, illiteracy that we have sorry illiteracy sounds bad level of low education in health service that we have and another one that we successfully helped her who believed to be pregnant for 7 years so we made her understand likely we had a traditional birth attendant there who talked to her explained to her that this is not pregnancy and later i can show you the picture of the huge fibroid we removed yeah so they believe to be pregnant because the abdomen is distended so they think this is a child inside but unfortunately it's not a child it's a fibroid some of the ideas that we have is exactly what we are doing to improve the health service incorporating traditional belief to the conventional medicine i understand that uh, current policies it's illegal for the traditional birth attendants to conduct deliveries i think if we will if we can incorporate them into whatever we are doing in whichever way possible it will really help personally i wish if we could have policies that will upgrade this traditional birth attendants to be more equipped with current skills and current delivery skills skills on identifying danger signs like use of pathograph in whichever simple way we can make it so incorporating traditional belief with conventional medicine i think that is the best thing that we can do to get this mother's health improved putting avoiding our traditional belief will make it really really difficult for us to achieve so we'll start with lamu and then slowly grow and uh, to be exact we will still continue strengthen using the experience that i have the project that we're doing so we will continue with empowering or other transforming traditional birth attendants to become birth companion we will continue with our mobile reproductive and antenatal care service we will strengthen and get better ways to do it because we were not doing it in the ideal way but the experience and the training has really helped me a lot We hope you've enjoyed hearing from Dr. Abubakar Bazba, Yali Network member from Lamu Kenya. Abubakar has big plans for mothers in Kenya. He hopes someday to be able to build a state-of-the-art maternal and child health center in Kenya that will give expectant mothers and their new babies the best chance at survival. Thanks, Abubakar, and thank you for listening. Be sure to come back for more inspiring stories from young African leaders on the Yali Voices podcast. Join the Yali Network at yali.state.gov and be a part of something bigger. Our theme music is Ego Happen by Grace Cherry and produced by the Presidential Precinct. The Yali Voices podcast is brought to you by the US Department of State and is part of the Young African Leaders Initiative, which is funded by the US government.